Hi, so this is a little tutorial on how I'm going to edit the video, this music video that's coming out soon. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is open this program called Any Video Converter. That lets you convert uh, basically any codec into another one, which is extremely handy if you have a difficult camera like mine that doesn't originally go into your editing software. So, going to drag my files in there, going to check my stuff over here. Um, X264, frame size is the original one, 12,000 bitrate, okay, and then the frame rate is 23.976, I'm going to up that to 30, and then going to press convert, and then I'll come back when it's done. Okay, about an hour later it's done, and I'm just going to copy this into the uh, folder for the raw footage and then I'm going to delete the original stuff so then I just have the mp4 and no more of that WMV shit and now I'm going to open a program called Sony Vegas Pro 11 that you can see there mmm looks good okay so now it's open and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the properties because right now it's on 16.9720p and I'm going to make it into a 2.35 to 1 um, unfortunately it's not showing up on my thing. Oh, okay, I didn't save it as a, uh, as a thing, so I need to do that. 2.35 to 1720p, 24p, and I'm going to apply and OK. So now I've got a 21.9 or 2.31, 2.35 to 1, uh, file. So I'm going to go into the footage where the music video stuff is. I'm going to import it into my project media folder here and then I'm also going to find the uh, music track and chuck it in there also. Now I'm going to add 10 video tracks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as you see, if we look on the side here, then there's 10 different tracks to choose from. And then I'll just drag inspectors of inspectors down here into a new audio track. And I'm going to label everything because that's what you do. Back in 79, the Jumbo Lucy in 1992. I did the Chris Ball in 2008. I did the Cloverfield Monster. I said, fuck that shit. I went back to the Belushi. Like okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my track and find where each thing is going to start by getting the um the things down here and seeing where each audio track is starting because I'm basing everything from the audio track and then once I have found out then I will delete this audio track and make this into a new group so then when you move one thing or another they'll both move. And now track by track I'm going to add effects so first off I'm going to make a chain of color corrector and the chroma key um, I'm new to the uh, Sony Vegas 11 color corrector but I think I might be able to handle it first off I'm going to up the saturation a little bit just to bring out greens and then change mids to a bit greener just to kind of saturate the greens a, a little further more put the offset down a tad and I think that looks a lot better than it was at the first place so maybe uh, offset down a little more without making it look too bad just kind of get that 35 mil effect and now I'm going to go into chroma key if you don't make an effects chain then make sure your color character is before your chroma key otherwise it'll just get all stuffed up um, for obvious reasons now if we go into chroma key we turn it off and then we select our own color somewhere in the middle there that seems about right and right off the bat it seems to work pretty well but it's not perfect so first off I'm just gonna adjust with my thresholds until it's uh, what it should be and um, that seems about right up my blur amount a little bit and um, mm, that seems pretty good and now for the close-up shots it'll be behind me I'm just gonna select this I'm gonna copy it paste it down there now because of the event grouping there'll be a 12th channel you can just get rid of that easily enough and then drag it back to where it should so everything is aligned properly. Now, as you see by solo it, the chroma key effects were already in place, so all we need to do is pan crop. I previously masked it, so I pressed position, so then I can go back to the original pan crop tools. And then I'm just going to zoom in here, so then um, kind of just get, get a close-up shot of the guitar behind me, so then at the end it'll look something like this. Um, which kind of looks I don't know I don't I don't like that I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put it over to the edge here I do like that look also my face there is extremely sexly sexly let's get a um let's get a full screenshot of that 
Oh, damn. Yum. And now, as you see up here, I've got the bass track that I'm ready to edit. And, um, basically, as you see, I can't really see both of the audio tracks at the same time because of the, uh, Les Paul tracks are in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in to the bit where, uh, the loud, first loud noise actually comes up. And I'm going to place a marker there. And then I'm going to zoom up here. And then I'm just going to place the first loud noise on this video track according to where the marker is. So, mmm, beautiful. What I do to event pan crop is I just uh, put it on 2.35 to 1, which is the uh, aspect ratio that I'm using. Just change it so I have enough headspace at all times. And then I'm going to mask it so then. I just, you can't see the lights and more of the natural background in there. Boom! Done! Okay. And now if I want to adjust the pan crop then, then I just go into position like I said. But I don't, so who cares. Okay, so now both tracks are color corrected. Um, I can safely change this. So, if I don't want this to... Whoa, whoa, look at all the me's. I should get rid of all of that shit first. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on Le Bass. And now I'm just going to pair the background and the bass track with themselves to make a new group. So then everything is wonderful once again.